Hey everybody, Dave Brudor, aka Locked and Loading here for part three of my three-part series with Adobe Stock. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna jump right into Adobe Stock 3D assets. We're gonna download a 3D model and that's going to be what drives our entire animation. And animation is going to be something we specifically focus on this in order to create a visually stimulating and mesmerizing animation. And we're gonna focus on creating a looping animation, which really is great for the platforms that we've been putting them on, such as Instagram or B hands creating animated gifs all that stuff the looping animations are going to drive a lot of traffic to your 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 page or your your animation and so those are the kind of factors that we want to focus on when we're creating today so let's just jump in and uh and wrap up part three let's go all right right into adobe stock 3d assets i'm going to find the 3d asset that i want to drive this tutorial to drive this animation i'm going to license it let's merge that right into our 3d application whether that's adobe dimension or another 3d software that you use and if you take a look here we've got all of our image assets we've got our 3d assets when we import that and license it from adobe stock okay now we just got to really figure out our composition grab our textures that we've downloaded, update our 3D model, apply them to each one of the pieces of this 3D model, and now let's start forming our composition here. So we can change our scale of the 3D object to fit a little bit better. You know, uh, I, I want to drive particles and an emission from the top of the hoodie. So I'm trying to frame it so the upper half has got a little bit of a room. Um, okay, now let's focus on our camera animation. I think the camera animation is something that's very much overlooked when people start animating their work. Creating a very interesting camera animation, a looping camera an animation can really be that thing that stimulates and drives the entire animation. It just gives it a little bit more life rather than just always having a very static movement. So now I'm just going in and I'm gonna dive in and finesse kind of some of these attributes. This will kind of break down the speed in which I want the camera to, to kind of loop in. And uh, and let's check this out. Let's hit, let's hit play here. You can see the particle simulation is coming up. Great, there's a very subtle camera animation and here is our final render of what that's going to look like. So here's my color palette. I love this color palette. It's got warms, cools, it's kind of vibrant, the green, magenta, and blue. And let's hop into After Effects and add an adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, let's go back in and add that grain and let's dial in these settings. Again, if you want a filmic quality to your 3D, adding in a little bit of subtle grain will really help do that. You can see here, I'm just jumping in, grabbing one of the presets that I like. Okay, let's add a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, um, let's let's play a little bit with some um, of the, the VR chromatic aberrations. And this will be nice and helpful. It'll just help like offset it. I'm gonna dial this in so it's really subtle, but it's just going to give it another set of filmic qualities. You know, this is definitely something that happens more often in film. So I'm gonna apply that effect and dial that in uh, to the 3D. And again, it's just kind of helping it feel more lifelike and not as CG because it is very CG. So let's create another adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to create a very loose kind of garbage mask here inside of After Effects. And I'm going to do this to help brighten up just maybe that front structure of those spheres because they're kind of getting lost and a little bit muddy. But I pull up that middle value. You can see the intensity, the vibrance of it starts to kind of pop a little bit more. So I'm just going to kind of tweak this handle a little bit and tweak the mask, feather it, and and really just kind of dial it in to kind of figure out how to pull the most vibrancy from that main subject matter. So that is pretty much it. You know, all these things wrap up together, really kind of help finesse this final piece, you know, downloading, using Adobe Stock 3D assets, using all these elements, creating a visually stimulating loop, figuring out what that loop point is for the final will be really crucial when you're setting up your animation, but giving that camera just a little bit of movement so it doesn't feel so static is really what's going to help take the, your looping animations to that next level so thank you so much for tuning in awesome enjoy